It is becoming increasingly clearer to me that when I mention a flat earther in one of my videos, you all might not be aware of who I'm referring to. So today we're gonna to fix that as I take you on a journey through the ultimate guide to flat earthers. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. And we're going to start with one of the biggest teams on YouTube, Globebusters. Globebusters are run by the well-known Bob Nodell, who proved Earth's rotation in the well-known documentary Behind the Curve. If we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. But seriously, if you don't recognize him, then what have you been watching? Bob's second in command is a guy called Jeron. He runs a channel called Jeronism. And he also proved something in that documentary, this time curvature. We have a backup experiment. If you're seeing through this hole, through the next hole, and seeing the light at the backboard, or at 17 feet off the water, the Earth is flat. If he's holding it up at 23 feet high and we're seeing the light, well, that's because the Earth's curved. So I, I should only be able to see it when it's at 17 feet. OK, go ahead and drive down there, Enrique. You're going to hold the light there. Enrique, how high is your light? 17 feet. I mean, I you know, it's as um there's we don't see you enrique lift up your lift up your light up, way above your head interesting next up on the globebusters roster is taboo conspiracy you might remember him from the series of moon landing hoax videos i did it's also important to note that not one person on earth was able to film this command module orbiting the moon with a telescope really you think someone with a telescope on earth could film something that small Taboo conspiracy fell from grace though, when he thought that humpback whales proved a flat earth. One of the founding members of Globebusters who takes a bit of a back seat nowadays is the Morgyle. He was the guy, if you remember, who didn't really understand Venus. Now, if you look at uh, online sources, they'll say that Venus actually sat at 11, but uh, clearly this thing had another good, uh, at least half hour, 45 minutes before it would have set. Uh, behind the horizon here. Okay, I'll check an online source. Oh, look, for Michigan, the heliocentric model says that on the 16th of June 2018, Venus will set at 11.43 p.m. So that means that the photo taken is pretty much exactly what you'd expect. So as you can see, a pretty ragtag bunch of individuals there. But what about the UK version of a Flat Earth team up. Well, we look no further than the Flat Earth Debate team. Run by Nathan Oakley, the Flat Earth Debate show is a daily show that has the same 200 people watch it day in, day out. Nathan spends his time muting guests and insulting people. Take a look. Didn't take long to debunk that absolute pile of crap proof of R now, did it, Wiggles, you complete dumbass. Well done for making yourself look like more of a moron than you had already. Well done with your crap example and your absolute shite proof of R. As you can see, a pretty toxic flat earther. His second in command, if you will, is a guy called Quantum Eraser. We've looked at him before. Here's his channel intro. Awful, isn't it? Next up on the Flat Earth Debate team is a guy called Sleeping Warrior. Now you should know him. He was the guy that didn't understand triangles. Anthony, if a triangle has the sides one, one and one, do you know what the angles of the triangle are? Which kind of triangle are you on about? Are you on about like a right angle triangle? The triangle has sides one, one, and one. Do you know what the angles are? Um, the angles would be... Well, it would be an equilateral triangle, wouldn't it? 
Right, so what are the angles? <clears throat> now I'm going to ask this again. If you have a triangle with sides of one, one, and one, what are the angles? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up a triangle calculator. He's also the guy that has appeared on this channel many, many times. And you sit there with your gay little corner and your gay little haircut and your gay little sphere. Next up for the Flat Earth debate team is Arwin. Now, Arwin is an avid member of the Flat Earth debate team, but he also runs his own show called Flat Earth Early Bird. Here's a clip to show the excitement that that one brings. And completing the team is the now rogue Ranty. He branched off to make his own show, but recently he's been talking about jacking it in altogether. Okay, let's go back to America for a bit, and we'll start off with the Flat Earthers who believe in the biblical version of Flat Earth. And we're gonna start with the infamous Nathan Thompson. He has appeared on this channel many, many times, which culminated in a debate with Conspiracy Cats. The highlight, of course, was Nathan explaining he couldn't do trigonometry, because he worked in miles and not kilometers. How would you calculate the distance to Polaris there? How is your trigonometry? Can you do it? And by the way, trigonometry is something we teach to 12 year old children in England. I'm just pointing that out. Can you calculate that distance? How would you calculate it, Nathan? I mean, it, so, so your argument is that the North, I, you know, I'm, I personally can't calculate that. I, I don't work in kilometers. I normally work in miles. Completing our holy trinity of Nathans is Nathan Roberts. He's well known on this channel for this. All these fake space pictures feeding lies to children. All this propaganda. An iconic moment for sure. Another iconic moment was Mr. Thrive and Survive's not understanding eclipses for what seemed like many, many videos. He's a very big conspiracy guy, Thrive and Survive. And it doesn't matter, guys. I don't care. Do it on an angle when you can go hundreds of feet with this and cast a shadow. The shadow never gets smaller, and you never get more than the very outside edge get a little bit blurry. Let's just hear that statement again. The shadow never gets smaller. The shadow never gets smaller. The shadow never gets smaller. Cue Robert Lafleur, who is about to rip Thrive's world apart. Away you go, Robert. Next up are the Flat Earth Brothers. They've got a reasonably large channel when they first appeared on this channel when they tried to debunk weather. Compile this image, screenshot it, and match it up with a globe and look at how big it is. It's wider than the United States almost. And if you were to take that line that's as wide as the hurricane and lay it along the widest part of Earth and Earth's diameter is around 8,000 miles, you can only fit three of these which would mean that Earth is 1,500 miles in diameter. To illustrate how ridiculous this point is, here is a picture of a golf ball. A golf ball has a diameter of between 41 and 42 millimeters. Now, if I place our hurricane picture on here and match up the lines, wow, my golf ball is what, 2,500 miles in diameter now? Bless them. Moving on, we're now gonna look at some of the Flat Earth Convention big players. And we're gonna start with the organizer, Robbie Davidson. He was the one who was convinced by Logan Paul that he was a Flat Earther. And it seemed like someone was on a journey. He had been looking into this, he was open-minded. He was willing to put his name out there. 
and say, hey man, I want to come, I want to learn. So it's with great pleasure that I'm going to introduce Logan Paul. Amazing. One of the big speakers at the Flat Earth Conference is Rob Skiba. You might remember him on this channel when we looked at his Skiba files. Over the disk of the Earth, at least according to the various estimations and things that I've read in Zetetic Astronomy and other books. So rather than accept the answer for the distance to and the size of the Sun, which by the way can be backed up by experimental evidence, you take the word of a bunch of books which by your own admission uses estimates. Great times. Of course, we can't mention the conference or Flat Earth without talking about Mark Sargent. He is by far the most famous Flat Earther and has appeared on many news stations and documentaries. His most watch outing on this channel though is this one. Radiation is only stopped by two metals, lead and gold. Our survey said... Oh, is that it again? Some radiation can actually be stopped by paper some by thin sheets of aluminium. In fact, only gamma radiation needs a metal like lead to stop it. Love doing that one. Right, hopping back over to the UK, we've got the guy who interviewed Mark Sargent on a park bench, lifting the lid. He's also been on a small documentary, but you'll remember him on this channel as the guy who thought he'd convert all people on the planet to flat earth. Now you're expecting that three flat earthers out of every 10 can convert one person a year. Now we're getting a little less realistic. We're now at 146 million, a bit more exciting. Let's just say half of us managed that. This is now delusional, that half of you can each convert someone to flat earth, no way. Now we're at 2.2 billion after 20 years. Now, Lift the Lid, of course, was very instrumental in setting up the European Globe Lie Tour. Now, originally that was started by John Smith Globe Lie. And when the tour went to Europe, some of my viewers got in on the act. And of course, one of John Smith Globe Lie's best friends is the infamous Gate Guy. Yes, that was none other than Chris UK, the video that launched this channel into the stratosphere by one of these stalwarts of flat earth science. Let's have a look at some more British flat earthers, shall we? Allegedly, Dave is very well known on this channel. He was the guy, if you remember, who was on the Macedonian chat show. Because they're destroying, because, oh, it's just an accidental planet, one of millions. We've found other Earths, you know. Eventually, if this one gets too messed up, we'll go to another one. Antonio Subrats is another flat earther who lives in the UK that I've had a few disagreements with. What's this? Oh no. No, 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 no. Have I been done? Let's just... It's on a video called Flat Earther Gets His Numbers Embarrassingly Wrong. Which is why I've called this Simon Dan Gets It Embarrassingly Wrong. Okay? He seems to have stopped Flat Earth for the moment and I've heard he's not well. Best wishes to him if that's the case. Phuket Word is also from the UK, but he lives in Phuket in Thailand. Now he's always on this channel with his little kooky experiments. Oh dear. Oh, and oh, there's the sunrise because the earth is coming back round again. 
Yeah. <laughs> Bless him. Going back to the States, you might remember this guy. You play these 88 keys with your 28 phalanges, and 88 divided by 28 is 3.142, an approximation and widely used abbreviation of the infinite and transcendental number of pi, or 3.1415. But 88 divided by 28 is 3.1428. So if we're rounding, that's 3.143, not pi. Pi is a vastly important constant in mathematics and something we will be covering more in just a bit. The 88 keys of a grand piano divided by the 28 phalanges of your hands giving us pi gives us a little insight into just why it is called a piano. That's the numbers guy, Marty Leeds. Now, he is another one of those biblical flat earthers who ended up challenging me to a live IQ test. Strange. Talking of strange, the next flat earther we're going to look at is Orphan Red. Now, she claims to be a member of Mensa, which apparently automatically means that the earth is flat. Because how can a Mensa member believe in a flat earth? Of course, she neglects to mention all of the Mensa members which aren't flat earthers. Her most popular outing on this channel was this one. The Cassini photographic probe was sent out uh, to photograph Saturn and its rings and its moons and send the photos back to Earth. And recently it completed its mission. It sent back amazing pictures of Saturn, of, of the rings of Saturn, crystal clear imagery. And then NASA shared those pictures of the world. But is that actually what happened? And is that actually possible in any way? No. No. Now, Orphan Red is very much like Red Pill philosophy. He was the guy that made actual plane noises. And one more time in case you were laughing too much. He was also the man that coined the phrase Satan Man Dan. Hilarious red pill. Now, no ultimate guide to Flat Earth is complete without CC. Yes, good old Chris from New York, Westchester County, who's famous for his car rants. But back to my point. It could only happen on a contained unit. Okay, that's, that's how climate control could happen. Okay, because if, if we were spinning at a thousand miles per hour, forget about traveling through uh, the, the universe and all that other bullshit, but if we were revolving, and we were revolving at a thousand miles per hour, and there was a, a bleeding part of space right there, and air could escape, a little air could escape, the planet would clean itself. But perhaps more amusingly is how his wife reacts to his beliefs. Alright, honey, come on. The sun was standing. Why don't you stop this bullshit? Christ. Idiot. Dear oh dear. Staying in America, we're looking at the man in a van, D. Marble, who was the subject of my very first video. You know, another thing that we're told about gravity is that uh, the old justification. And there are still adults walking around saying, if it weren't for gravity, we'd all go flying off into space. But a grown adult saying that the Earth is flat and covered by a glass bowl that has water outside it is fine. Flat earthers seem to love to have a little place where they can film their videos, much like the next person we're going to look at, Daniel Pratt, who films from, well, somewhere. And if I keep it relatively level, it'll stay at that blue line. Because gravity's holding it there, right? The same gravity that's holding this piece of metal on there. Okay? So why is it when I bend the tube... All the water disappears like gravity has suddenly stopped working at that point. As you can see, he likes to have a dig now and again. Another one who likes to have a dig is Dell from Beyond the Imaginary Curve. Without further ado... He's got such a glacial look in him. You can see that he's just a snivelling little cretin. I would love to know the real history of this guy. Because there's something that's just not quite right with him. He hosts a weekly show where he comes up with new rules for physics, amongst other things. The best thing I've seen him do is pour water on a ball as evidence for not being a globe. What happens when we pour liquid on the basket? Oh, 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 oh. Now, I'm going to try really hard. Uh, you know, I want to be as honest as I can. I want as much of this water to stick. 
to the surface of this basketball as I possibly can. Genius. And that's what I think flat earthers do the most, more than anything, is the fact that they doubt the globe. Forget about positive proof of flat earth, it's all about attacking the globe. And the man who does that more than many is Level Earth Observer. Elevation is, I go up 16,322 feet, I come down 16,312 feet, wow. Difference of 10 feet, 10 feet of difference. You heard it here first people, there's only 10 feet of difference between Weymouth and Aberdeen. Of course what you fail to understand is that you're using elevation, which is a value given to the height above sea level. As you're making your journey from one seaside town to another, then of course there's going to be very little difference between the two. I don't think anyone else has appeared on the Flat Earth Fell compilations more than him. Right, well we're almost finished with this ultimate guide to Flat Earth, uh, but we need to finish up with the man which most Flat Earthers would say is the king, Mr. Eric DeBay. He's been on this channel many, many times. The most recent, though, I think is the best. Why have you ignored all Analemma photos that do show size changes and only presented your audience with one such picture where it doesn't? Well, I didn't. Because if you search solar Analemma like this, then you'll see that almost every single example shows a sun that doesn't change size. So that begs the question, why are you cherry picking the one that you think does change size? Eric seems to just make videos. He doesn't debate, doesn't go live, nothing like that. Oh, and he's a yoga instructor. Need we say more? Well, there we go. What a tour to the world of flat earthers that was. Of course, there are many, many more than that, but I thought I'd give you the rundown of all the big players. Now you should know who's who whenever we talk about flat earthers. I hope you enjoyed it today. Um, please, please do like and subscribe if you did. I've been Simon and Dan, have yourselves a great weekend and I'll see you all on Tuesday for some more tinfoil fun. See you then.